All right, last one for you, then we'll let you go. Did you see the Cowboys video of Jerry and Post Malone on schedule release night? And any Cowboy thoughts? We don't have a ton around here. We're trying to figure out the draft board. If Michael Parsons was really above the two corners, who did they really want? They told us Michael oh, I'll tell you was that the one. first option. Okay. I'll tell you. Well, first of all, I saw the Post Malone video. I thought it was great. I love Post Malone. Um, I'm a little annoyed that he follows Jane Slater and not me on Twitter, but look, these are, <laughs> these are my own personal things, whatever. Um, I thought the video was awesome. I thought Dak's cameo was tremendous. Um, so I, I, you know, I, lo I really enjoy schedule release everything, everything about it. I thought that video was top three in the league. Um, I felt they were going to draft Micah Parsons all along so much so that I saw Micah Parsons, you know, I was in Cleveland during the job. I saw Parsons that the night before the draft, and he was like, what do you think? And I said, I think you're going to the Cowboys. And he was talking about how, you know, he'd have to tackle Zeke in practice, and he was looking forward to it. And I was like, be careful what you look forward to. It's not – tackling Zeke is not really what you want to do. But anyway, um, I, I, I thought he was going to the Cowboys all along. And I, I knew that Parsons – that the Cowboys had Parsons over the corners. I probably knew that for two or three days. Wow. You know, and it's not not the kind of thing you really report. It's just draft news like that is kind of odd. Plus, it could mess with their yeah. their actual draft, and I'm not really trying to do that. Um, I mean, if it was news, it was, but that didn't feel like news to me. I just knew all along, the whole week, Parsons was the guy they were targeting. And had he not been there and one of the corners were, I think they probably would have traded back. Finally, we got an answer to it. Thank yeah. you, Ian Rappaport. And if, oh, oh, wait, Fantex, you guys aren't going to ask him. We got to ask you about Tebow, I guess. Oh. Uh, are you is, is the, is contractually the obligated to ask about Tebow? I, I'm contractually obligated. Is this an okay. eye roll? Is this does this make you question? Is this making people question Urban Meyer with the strength coach and now this type of move? Is this an eye roll on the pro level? I don't know what it is yet. Right now, it's a player who is who hasn't played in eight years who's getting invited to camp. I mean, I know he's Tebow, so let's not pretend it's like just a regular thing. But I'm okay with him coming to camp and, and getting a chance. It's Urban Meyer. He's comfortable with Tebow. It's kind of like when, you know, coaches get to some place and they go, you know what, let me bring in a couple people from my previous team just to instill some stuff. It's like uh, Brian Flores signing Jason McCourty. Like, how much does Jason McCourty have left? I don't know, but he's going to instill some stuff, right? So Tebow will show guys whatever Meyer's looking for, and that's fine. If he makes the team, I hope he has earned it. Um, yeah. And if he really does earn it, then okay. If he doesn't make the team, then all right, this was a fun storyline. I just – my only problem would ever be if he didn't deserve to be on the team, and he was – and I just – roster spots are so valuable. I'm just not sure that's going to happen. I don't know. To me, it was kind of fun. I almost fell into it on draft day, and the fact that I got to break it was amazing and hilarious. Um, so because of that, I'm all in on Tebow. <laughs> what's, the, what's the last story that you broke that blew up the most? Like what, what, what in the past year just exploded and detonated? Oh, man. Um – the last year, jeez, uh, or six months. Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson wanting out of Houston was uh, yeah. that exploded pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think. I can never remember the ones I broke. I can always remember the ones that I didn't. Um, What's the know. one that Tebow haunted kinda... you? The story that because because you're, you, I think you're like me. I think more about. Like the ones that I barely would, would miss on versus the ones I got and allow that to eat you up. What's one that, that tormented you for any different so, type of reason? So um, I would say to me, um, like the DAC contract, which obviously was something we focused on for a year and a half more. I got a sense that afternoon that something was happening. And so like I reported on at like two o'clock Things were headed in a positive direction, and I'm like, all right, maybe in a couple of days they'll get it done. And then I reached out to some people, and no one got back to me. And I was like, oh, okay, it's kind of weird. And it's, and then you know, the team announced it. Everyone got numbers at the same time, so it's really fine. But I'm a little annoyed at myself now for not going harder when like 
I sort of felt something was amiss and something might be happening and I should have hit it harder because that would have been a fun one. But instead the team announced it. So it's sort of like, that's a draw, you know? Hey, thank you for coming back on the show. It was awesome content, but hopping on zoom, as you know, by now it just changes and improves every interview. So this was awesome. Poison t-shirt, Christmas tree credentials in the back. Enjoy the golf course a little bit of time off. Thank you, brother. All right. Thanks, guys. Good talking to you.